Now arriving at Li Jiang Tower. Wait, live? Okay. Hello, people of the internet. We are here for another match. We are going to witness Hunter College versus GGNY. Uh, Unchained Rose. Unchained Rose. Apologies, apologies, right there. Hunter College versus Unchained Rose. We just saw Hunter College play against um, Neutral Huguenots, and they came out victorious. Now, can they keep that win streak going on to deal with Unchained Rose? They're going head to head. I'm actually unfamiliar with this team a bit here. However, I do know about Hunter College, and I know that Sexy Buck is a potent hit scan player. Where Jafrizi is a potent support main slash off tank. You know, he Kogamori and Jafrizi, they interchange roles a lot. And I think it's really interesting and unique. Yeah, and uh, not a lot of teams do that. Like, they usually have this one set, you know, lineup for the teams. But, you know, this team, Hunter College, they do like to, you know, go back and forth. But we've seen Kogomori morally on, uh, mostly on that uh, off, off tank role mo for the most of the part for these this evening. So I'm really interested to see what comes on. And I'm, you know, just as uh, my partner Romy said, we're not familiar with Unchained Row. So I'm really excited to see what they bring in the table. Looks like their main tank player is. Javolte and then we have their Zen player and we have Shadow Slayer on that Zarya and looks like both teams are running the Sombra going Goats. Going way here, yeah. Sombra Goats versus Sombra Goats here. Looks like Rex is gonna get pushed back a bit. However, the hack comes out onto Z, onto Z Bolt and he's gonna get pushed back a bit. He doesn't want to fall a bit low. He doesn't have that shoot to keep him a bit safe. He's gonna get stunned. However, he's back to back fully operational and looks like Hunter College just pushed them all the way back there. The hack was all they need. They didn't necessarily need to find the pick but it did find the value. It found the space and for that Hunter College was able to take the first point. Yeah and that was so uh, such a good play by Hunter College. They you know they really made it work. They made sure you know they knew what they were doing and you know a lot of <laughs> Kokomori is doing a lot of spam but you know a lot of clean fights came through and they knew how to yeah. sh shut down and change CC. No bubbles available to Kogamori. He's gonna get pushed back a little bit. Jafrizi falling a bit low. The shadow's gonna oh come my out God. It's huge! It finds a bit, it finds a pick onto Shadow Slayer. He's gonna go in. He breaks it. It's not done. He wants more. It's the, it's oh gonna, my God! The, the transcendence. No, he is not. He's going to fall. And it looks like it's just a summer left. His soul consumer is gonna drop. And RBM is just got three ki uh, three kills right there on that shatter, and this is so good for Hunter College, and they're showing so much, you know, so much patience and so much um, understanding of this game that right after that sh shatter, they did not use a single ultimate to capitalize. You know, they kept their ultimates for the next fight, and that's what we, you, you want to do in these, you know, ghost compositions. You want to cycle ultimates. And it looks like the huge MP is gonna come out here. Jafrizi finds one. All the members of Unchained Rose are unavailable or have no access to their abilities for six seconds. Windstar doesn't quite find any value. He gets he's the last one alive and he gets hacked once more and sent back to the spawn room. Wow. And Hunter College is just doing such a good job of making these fights not last to the point where Unchained Rose, their somber player, still does not have EMP after three fights. And yeah. that's really good. What, that's is that what, an AKM EMP? <laughs> that's what you want to do if you're playing against the Sombra composi uh, Goat's composition is that you want to make these well, fights. It looks like an early shatter. It found Shadow Sl Oh found my Shadow god! Sparrow. This man Regza is on a roll. And speaking of roll, he's going to roll Unchained Rose back to the spawn room yet again. 90%. They have no way of getting back here in time such oh. a good shatter right now but looks like looks all like soul consumer is just making he's going for a race can he get he there just in time oh he's he goes invisible just in time our beam is gonna take him head on he gets a bit of support and he did it he and be really oh. he gets taken down anyways our beam just doesn't care this man but they might be able to touch this oh no that was so good by Hunter College. RBM said, even if you hack me, I still have my aim. I'm just going to shoot you. And, you know, looks like it looks like Soul Consumer paid for that. Yeah, and that was such a clean point. Uh, wow. Looks I like have... he finally got his EMP. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because, like, the fights were so short and so clean to the point where Soul Consumer did not get a chance to even build an EMP. Looks like they are going for this, you know, whoa. Clockwork. So looks like a really clockwork, uh, clockwork Vendetta. 
Clockwork oh. Vendetta, huh? You know, if you guys do not know who Clockwork Vendetta, uh, Vendetta are, they are a team, you know, who are open division team that made it to, you know, um, overall league contenders with solely just playing this composition, which were basically yeah. all these players, players were just top 500. But yeah, yeah. They, they were just they're running the Arisa, <laughs> the Torb, and the May. It's a, it's a really wacky comp here, and it makes it really interesting to see because you'll never expect, you'll never expect this happen. And looks like. Looks like um, Hunter Cloud is running the May of their own. Sexy Bob oh. onto the May. The Ice Queen here. Where's is gonna get anti-nade? Actually, a huge anti-nade falling a bit under the radar. Commando, big nade. Who cares? Because uh, Hunter Cloud just finally picks Emoigi and RBM the support line. Emoigi, Emoigi is the MVP. Uh, he is doing a lot of work and now what happened there for Unchained Rose, uh, Rose is that if you're going to play that composition, your, your May, who was Sparrow, needs to cut the team in half. And, but what they did do, they cut off the Reinhardt, but they didn't fully block him off from the big heals and all their heals that were available from, you know, Hunter College. So what happened was even though the Rhine, they just took too long for the Reinhardt to, uh, to be killed. So, you know, that's where they really fell. Unchained Rose. Oh, looks, looks like, like we're we having a pause. A pause. You know, I kind of kind of expected it with all that shenanigans yeah, going on. Yeah, it looks like we had a um, like a DC. Yeah, um, we'll get that sorted out real soon here. But in the meantime, can we talk about how you no know, sexy buck decides to show up out of nowhere, flexing on that May. You didn't really see it coming. He hasn't run the May against um, against Huguenot and other matches that they played on this very same map. Yeah, it looks so like they were really holding back then. Wow. Yeah. But um. You know, as we're talking about, if you're going to run these May compositions on the control center for Li Jiang Tower, your main goal is to cut off people from the healers or the healers from the pe you know, other characters from in the team. Because what really does uh, it does is that people cannot no healer in this game can really heal through any walls or barriers. So that you really want to take advantage of that on these small rooms, the uh, small pass uh, hallway that you have on Li Jiang Tower. So you know, you just want to cut people off and take advantage of the people that are not in you know at the other side of the wall and just burn them down as soon as possible mm -hmm. now the reason why they couldn't really do anything there on chain road is because they burned the uh, they cut the Reinhardt off but they couldn't burn him down in time yeah. so by that time team hunter college was able to break the may wall and just you know go rejoin with their Reinhardt player and help him out yeah, and Unchained Rose, if you're going to run the, the clockwork composition, as it's known, or, you know, even a recent hog in general, you have to get the pull and hook comb combination. And if you're not familiar with that, Orisa has the ability to halt, where she's able to pull an uh, enemy member out of position, you know, towards the, the epicenter of the of the mini graviton. And, you know, that... that that moment is very prime for Hog to get a hook off, and if he lands the hook, that's pretty much just a guaranteed kill for the team. A little bit of focus fire, a lot of damage coming in from Hog and Orisa, and you know it's a free kill, and it opens up the team fight severely. Yeah, and you know a lot of as we're seeing these fights, you know they are supposed to be scrappy and very brawly fights, but I feel like running that Orisa against this guy, you know. This comp uh, the composition that Hunter College is running, the full-on ghost composition, might actually backfire a lot. Yeah. Because, you know, what Reinhardt's could do is like, hey, there's a Orisa. There's a barrier that is static. So what we could do is just run all through the barrier and just do as much as damage as possible. Because, you know, the barrier is no use if it's behind the enemies and it's not blocking any yeah. damage. However, so the real strength... The real, the real thorns from Unchained Rose's composition here comes in once the ultimates come online. You see, May Ult is able to surround the bunker, as as most as um, Clockwork Vendetta themselves use it most of the time. They use the AOE of the May Freeze, the May Ultimate, to surround the bunker and make it really hard for. Um, enemy teams to push in, even if they are running goats. It's a similar story with Torb's ult, the the kind of missing man of this of this uh, composition here. Yeah, his lava is a really good cutoff point because it does melt through armor, and for you know, goats composition, a lot of the team members gonna have armor. Yeah, so looks like we are getting a. Getting a there you go. Yeah, it soul, looks like consumer. soul consumer makes it back just yes. in the nick of time. Yeah, I was about to say a five v six. That'll be very interesting. But yeah, soul consumer does make it back in time. It looks like they're still going for the same composition. Yeah. You know, soul consumer did lose a lot of ultimate charge while he got disconnected. But you know, 
there's so much you could do. But you know, let's see. And oh, there you go. Huge full combo there. Does look like it's the damage there for Kokomori? Nah, quite. Falling a bit low, and the walls separating everybody. Now looks like Zebo is just by himself here. It's a scrappy fight, but Shadow Slayer somehow finds the he finds the magic in the mess and finds the pick onto Regza, and looks like. Hunter Cloud is still how managed to hold. However, Unchanged Rose is gonna be able to regroup here easily. And they're gonna uh, look so consumer finds the pick on the RBM. That's the support player down. They don't have the transcendence now. Now the RBM had the transcendence first, but they don't have the Discord or to begin with. And they surround the bunker here. And it looks like Regza is gonna go in. He doesn't care. The wall is there, and it looks like Windstar is gonna be able to he's gonna use the transcendence. He's gonna use it. He doesn't want to die. He's gonna keep himself alive. Use the transcendent. And the wall is gonna be able to separate Zebo from the rest of his bunker companions. The Hoyles are coming in, but it's not enough. Kogamori is gonna melt him. And Sexy Buck is gonna find the pick onto Windstar. And another really strong hold from Hunter Cause. He's Sexy Buck right now. Sexy Buck's wall cutoff is so good at this point. It's like you have to mention it's it. It's, it's, it's precise. Super this guy is precise. A, this guy is a surgeon with the May walls. Yeah, he's cutting off the team so well, they're just not able to do anything. And they're not going to even make it to the point. <laughs> Hunter <Yeah>. College. <laughs> Hunter <laughs> x Hunter College is going to be able to take Li Zhang Towers. You know, the first point. And I really want to talk about Sexy Vax, you know, made right there. Because it was such an, such an impact on this team, team composition. His walls were so good. And let's look and at this huge five man shatter coming in from Regza pinning everybody up against the wall like you if you've ever seen the back of a garbage can a garbage truck how it just compresses all of that trash against the wall that's exactly where Regza right there he shattered pinned everybody against the wall swing 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 and it's a one team fight and he makes himself look like a hero I mean that you know, for landing that shatter so well he is a hero because he just took, you know enabled his team to get you know one thing I want to say about Reinhardt shattered not only that it CCs the other team but it's a perfect ultimate for helping your teammates build more ultimates which yeah. is very important in this game of Overwatch especially if you're going to play you know compositions like you know um let's say uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Goats. You know, if you're going to play the composition goats, you know it's very important to cycle ultimates, and that's what we saw uh, team uh, team um, Hunter College do. They were so good at cycling these ultimates and knowing when to use what, so they could help their other teams build more ultimates. Yeah. Now, Unchained Rose hasn't been able to get the chance in that previous map to show off their beautiful petals, their amazing skill, and their deadly thorns. But hopefully in this next map, I'm really looking forward to see what they can pull out here. I feel like z -Volt's, um main tank is actually a bit of a sleeper agent here. I feel like he can give some real competition for Regza. Regza's been looking really dominant, but I feel I have a, I have a, I have a premonition that z -Volt is going to have him sh shook in his boots. I mean, let's not give them Caster's, ca uh, caster's Curse, but I'm I'm really excited to see what Windstar could do here too. You know what I am I'm always a fan of watching uh, Zenyatta players because you know just because just by you know a lot of people do sleep on support players on Overwatch and Zenyatta players could really just show how dominant they are depending on how good they are or not. So you know I'm really excited to see Windstar's uh, Windstar's Zenyatta see what he could do and you know. Uh, you know, um, and also I feel like as as we see Unchained Rose, they just need more team, you know, it's yeah. more support for, you know, as we were talking about, their main tank player. Yeah. If the main tank player has more support, he could do be more aggressive and build more ultimates and, you know, just do more in general. What we've seen team, team, uh, um, from team uh, Hunter College, you know, Regza, he was able to do so much because of all these supports. Now, now Encore Esports is the venue providing the both of these matches that you get to saw, that you get to see. And Encore Esports is a gaming lounge where you can bring just about anything and everything. You can bring your controllers, your monitor, your own PC, bring a car, boat, helicopter, whatever you really want. We have, we provide Smash Bros. Ultimate, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Pokemon Go, Street Fighters, <laughs> Smash Bros. Melee, Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Overwatch. But we also include League of Legends and a variety of games. Now we are on the road to defend the North. Your, your, the biggest, the biggest fighting game tournament in the state of New York. We have Tekken. We're gonna have Tekken Seven on June first. Uh, on June first. 
already happened. But <laughs> June 15th, we are going to have Mortal Kombat 11. The 30th, we're going to have Smash Bros. The 29th, Smash Bros. Melee. And the 22nd, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. These are seven. These are a few events that you can book for the biggest fighting game tournament in New York State. Like, this is it. I mean, you know, Defend the North are known for, you know, they are one of the tourneys for Capcom. You know, one of the six, only six tourneys in the world. Defend the North is one of them. So, you know, Capcom players or, you know, even people who want to uh, participate on the Capcom World Tournament in Japan, they go to these tourneys, they win tournaments or games, and then that's how they, you know, they qualify to go to the um, World Cup in Japan. So, you know, if you're into that, if you think you're good enough, join, you know, apply for it online. You know, we're really excited to see all these players, you know, coming in to defend the North. Yeah. But, you know, let's talk about this game that we're coming in right now. Next map is Dorado. So, what are you expecting from Dorado right now? I haven't seen Dorado in a while. We didn't see Dorado in the last match against, um, against the Huguenot. So, we'll be interested to see what kind of team composition we run, um, um, folks are going to run on this one. Because we did see Unchanged Rolls bring out a bit of a wacky clockwork composition here. So I wanted to see, are they, are they relying on that Orisa pick? Will they run Bunker here? We're, we'll, we'll only find out like once once this match starts and gets on the way. I cannot wait. Exactly, and you know Dorado really brings a lot of uh, Dorado really brings a lot of uh, variety when it comes to map and composition wise. Because e even though Bunker might look super good in paper, you could actually run a lot of things on Dorado, like a very strong Pharah would be very nice on Dorado too because of all the open space and verticality that the map has to offer. So, you know, I'm excited to see what these two teams bring up. And like I said, I'm really curious to see what Team uh, Unchained Rose themselves could bring up right now because I want to see some really, some headshots coming out from Windstar and some, na uh, not, uh, you know, nasty stuff from Shadow Slayer, you know? Yeah, you know, um... You did see in the last map, Unchanged Rolls. They kind of stuck to this composition there, their clockwork composition. They stuck with the Orisa May, and, you know, it just wasn't working out. They were constantly butting their head into a wall, kind of like a bit like just walking into a chair. It just didn't really make a lot of sense. And, you know, we'll, hopefully we'll see a bit more um, ad adaptability coming out from Unchained Rolls because... They do have they do have some potential here. and it looks like we're gonna see Soul Consumer on the Widowmaker. Maybe just trying to find a quick cheeky pick. They're hmm. running a very high um, DPS comp. Solo tank Hammond on the Mercy for heals and the Sombra Widowmaker and the Fara. And exactly what I camp. talked about. You could you know even though Bunker does seem the better option in paper. Uh, composition wise for this map you could actually do a Farah composition too and this is the famous you know four com uh, you know tr uh, four uh, four dps triple dps um, my bad triple dps composition that shanghai dragons are known for playing in shanghai dragons and chengdu, chengdu hunters. hunters are known for playing in the overwatch league so i'm excited to see how they utilize it this if you play this composition you have to be very humble humble and you have to be very you know patient on when you're dri diving because this is a very high to come to play and we're gonna see on the way here right they just got another opposition he gets oh first side of sparrow but he falls a bit low there the hack is gonna come out onto rbm he's not gonna have to harm the orb or the discord or crispy wants on back at what? it again with the junker finding the pick on the shadow slayer you don't always see a uh, junk that kill a slumber every day but it happened here wow a fera antinated this is a lot of interesting oh stuff. the soul consumer finding a headshot putting one right between the eyes of regza that's one omnic down they don't have a shield to come up every few seconds they only have the defense matrix but they don't have it anymore for six seconds because Kogamori is going to get hacked and D-Mech, he's peeled out from his shell. Kippy wants to find yet another pick. He, they, he's making it really hard for Unchained Rose to get to get some footing here. And this guy, Crispy, is actually so clutch in these situations where every single time you think things are going bad, he always comes up with a huge pick that nobody even thought of. Oh, a, oh my, a cheeky headshot um, attempt there. Grappling up, trying to get the headshot over the Oh my face. god! One time, what? This guy, this is, what counters him? What counters him? I need to know. Because this guy just took a Pharah out of the sky as Junkrat. On paper, Pharah counts as Junkrat, but this guy, he, you know, roll reversal here. He, he flips it on his head. Wow, we're seeing some really nutty stu uh, yeah, stuff know, coming right? out from the Hunter College. He must be feeling pretty <laughs> smug about that, you know, just like... And Look and you know, tables. one of the things that really uh, you know surprised me when the game started is, as we seen from the point of uh, perspective from Rexa, as he was shooting the pharmacy, the moment the pharmacy came into the air, they immediately oh, got taken Devo down to half. Getting caught out just a little bit. 
and he's gonna get taken out by RPM and a lot of Pharah spam coming in here from Sparrow. He's not gonna be contested all that much. MOEG falling a bit low, the support is there for him just in the nick of time. Wow, Sparrow this is gonna have his Rocket Barrage online any moment now. He has the Mercy Pocket. You know, both teams are gonna have a lot of ultimates online. RBM taking down this hamster once again. I guess Zenyatta is a is a is not a fan. He's not a fan of the first Jervis. And there you go, the Rocket Barrage does come through, but there yeah, is the sound barrier. Oh Emma we just gonna get hacked before the before the um High Noon is gonna fully find its way. And looks like the Riptide is gonna not find anybody because Soul Consumer is gonna put a bullet in it. He's gonna puncture the tire a bit. RBM is gonna go down to the hands of Soul Consumer. He's one aggressive than Yada. Our Soul Consumer finally get another headshot. He's gonna get booped around by by Crispy, but doesn't quite find the headshot on him just yet. He's gonna get dove by Kogamori. He's everybody's on this guy's case. They want to shut him down for sure. Kogamori finally picked on the Sparrow with a Demon Bomb somehow, and he's gonna get booped around. Crispy Wanton is extremely low there in the back line. He's gonna have to get it. He needs some support. Looks like Silk Consumer 4 going for another headshot. He hasn't found one yet, but he might find one today. I want to see something spectacular. And, you know, can we talk oh, about how Looks well like he's going to get caught right now. Yep, he's caught at the wrong place at the wrong time. He had the infrasight, but, but he didn't see them just walk up to him up that staircase. I mean, when you're zooming in, you are kind of tunnel vision. So, you know, your, ha uh, your team should be able to help you out too. But, you know, looks like we see the carpet oh, laid like out really right now. Really aggressive slam right there. The nade is gonna be able to clear out most of the mines. Spiro is falling extremely low. Five health there. This guy saw his life flash before his eyes. That's insane. I'm still trying to find out how Team uh, Team Hunter College is taking care of this Spiro so well, despite not having that much of actually no hit yeah. scan whatsoever, other than ML Luigi. But you know, There's even a then, a lot of damage coming in from Unchained Rose. However, they didn't get the payload really moving until just now. You know, that's because Hunter College is always able to have just one person alive, at least just contesting the payload, making sure it's staying put until you kill me. Yeah, looks like Rexham did make it in the switch to Hammond to yeah, they're quickly touch that. Much time. Just, at least just get it to overtime. Exactly. You know, and they did a very good job of burning the time, taking the trends out. I'm not right, sure whether we're trend. about to see nine right there. We almost saw a Charlie Niner. And Sparrow's gonna get. He's gonna try to find the picks off. Oh and my high god! Noon. It's a three man! MOEG, he's finding three picks with the high new. He finds the fourth one, putting the bullet in. Can he get the 5k for style points? No. It's somehow, Hunter College, they sink their teeth in. They were not letting go of this payload. We're holding that point. And it seemed like a risky investment for Rexa just to jump on the point, throwing caution to the wind. Seemed like a risky investment for RBM to throw his trans out onto the point. But somehow, they came onto the point. Two ultimates was all they needed. Two ultimates, five kills. We s we got to see our first electric cowboy in the scene coming in. You know what known as we saw this back in s season seven, uh, season season five. You know it was wow that was that was amazing. I did say I wanted to see something spectacular, and Hunter College delivered on that. You know it's like they heard my they heard my pleas, my cries, and you know this match has been spectacular overall so far. Unchanged roles. They're gonna have to hold this the same way Hunter College had held them. They're gonna make sure that that payload does not get past that very exact spot, just past the statue, yet just before the the mosaic on the floor. You know, and that that sometimes seems like a very uh, un, um, you know impossible thing to do. It really isn't. It's only for four minutes that you really need, five minutes that you really need to hold back for. And you know that could be very possible if you do it right, like we've seen from Hunter College, cycling people in and out in the uh, uh, from, uh, from the payload so you know you don't necessarily let it move even though you, you may be losing the team fight you're burning off a lot of stuff so it looks like you know team uh, unchained rose will be going to the you know known as the bunker composition with a slightly tweak uh, tweak uh, as they're running the Farah. Yeah. so you know we might be seeing some very flashy exploding things <laughs> in our screen for the well, next the couple of minutes let's find a nice little cozy spot in this team composition because having the mercy in the the damage boost the bashing it also means that you can have a mercy for a farah so it kind of makes mercy a bit of a swiss army knife here speaking oh of swiss God. army knife emma Ouija is gonna go oh, down what? and rbm well, is he a hit scan that's i think that's in yada and but he finds the pick on the sparrow regardless 
And I, I really want to talk about this. I was about to mention it because, you know, when Hunter College were defending. Oh, that's a lot of damage onto wow. Rexa. He does not have an answer for it. That's a second kill onto RBM. That's just a Bastion doing Bastion thing. Exactly. You go into turret mode, you get a little friendly, little mercy to damage boost you, and you kill anything that's in front of you. And Nothing can survive that. And Kogumari has the right idea. He will be switching over to that D.Va right now because running Hog, uh, um, uh, Hog into this composition will not do anything because there's just going to be so much spam coming in, coming in from Soul Consumer that he'll they'll be not they'll not be able to keep up. Yeah, speaking of Soul Consumer, he already has his ultimate online. That's before everybody else in the game. This guy is one step ahead, and it's a risky dive. But the looks like the Immortality is going to keep everybody alive. He finds one pick onto the freeze. Can he get the other support? It doesn't matter because well, I guess I spoke too soon. He finds the second support, and it looks like. Hunter, um, Hunter College does not have anything to keep him alive against them. It was a risky choice going on to dive. However, it is potent enough if you can find the right the right timing for it. That finding the hack onto the Bastion or being able to shut down the immortality field means that or getting a large anti nade means that you can just dive onto them and they won't have any healing. They won't have any like sustain. To exactly, keep them alive. and yeah. as we see in the ultimates uh, coming in, you know, Hunter College does have the EMP, which is very important, and they have the nano boost they could, that they could be using it on on Rexa, and that's what and that looks EMP, like. Soul Consumer going down. He's getting his own good Soul Consumer, and it looks like Crispy finding two picks, one on the Bastion and onto the Orisa. He's hunting Omnic. Rexa finds the pick onto Commando. Moe finds the pick onto Sparrow, taking now his taking out his counter. And, and the new bomb isn't gonna find anybody. Gonna find Windstar, Whoa. and that is just a looks like it's gonna be a smooth little walk down the streets, you know, after the parade. They missed the party, but they're not missing the victory. Exactly, and I don't think you know, Team Unchained Rose is any in any shape or form to defend this point right now. And as we say, Team Hunter College does take the second map of this series. Now, they only need one more to take the game itself, yep. you know. And what do you have to say coming into this? And uh, yeah, we get to see the <laughs> big electric, the electric cowboy play. right Com here. Coming out of left field, but actually coming from right side high ground. And he's going to find the three kills with the high noon. Find the pick onto the ham. And that is, that is kind of animal cruelty, uh, if, I, if I do say so myself. I don't have a gerbil, but I kind of want one. <laughs> Seems like Emma Ouija did not. And you know, I'm 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 very excited. You know, I'm I'm excited. I mean, yeah. Even though it looks like a one-sided map, these are, these games are pretty fun. You know, we're used to seeing these professional games run. You know, only goats composition, but we're seeing some really nice. You know, refreshing things coming into here. Now, you know, I really want to talk about team hunt uh, team uh, hunter okay. college right here because wow. What a show they put in, you know. Team, you know, when as as soon as the game started, right? I was looking, you know, we saw the spectator, you know, showing us the point of view of Rexa, right? The moment Rexa was shooting, the moment Farah and Mercy came up, they were immediately taken down to half health. So I look over to the team composition. I see they have a junk red. <laughs> and a McCree that wasn't even looking at the Vera. So I'm like, wait, <laughs> who's doing all this damage? So, you know, it's very interesting to see all these players come together and just take down. We saw RBM take down Farah a couple of times like yeah. that's crazy you know so RBM is, is <laughs> kind of he's, he's playing he's playing out of his mind right now and crispy is just doing amazing on this junk rat like yeah people need a need to answer his junk rat because he's just everywhere he's everywhere literally everywhere and then he's just getting these key picks even when you know just when you think unchained rose has a you know advantage that they could push in and take Oh, no, Crispy takes it right away. He just gets a kill, yeah. and they can't do it anymore. So, you know, coming to this next map, next map we do see is Hanamura, which is a big, big May, May map and a Junkrat map. And we have seen Hunter show how good they are on those two, uh, those two heroes. What do you think Unchained no Rose need to do right now? My prediction is that they're going to run Bunker on the defense. Mm -hmm. That's my prediction. My... What they need to do, their answer to this, has to be finding the stun. They need to find the stun. There has been not too many stuns onto Regza, who has been able to get really, really aggressive, really up in their face, and get a lot of ultimate charge, make so much space for his DPS. RBM, Moeg, 
they, they've been and and crispy. How can I forget? And crispy have been able to just pop off. They've been able to do so much because Horegza is is he's he's the bulwark. You know he's he's the shield. He's the spearhead. He's clearing everything out. He's the bulldozer. And if Unchained Rose doesn't have an answer for that, then you know the history is going to repeat itself from the last two matches. And, you know, we're talking about these tank players and we're talking about these, you know, DPS players. But we really cannot forget about the healers because the healers are just doing a beautiful job of keeping Rexa tip and topped up and all these DPS that are running around. You know, because you when a team plays aggressive, you know, their healer also have to adapt and be aggressive with the heals on their, you know, characters or on their teammates because, you know, there's going to be no aggressive playstyle if your healers cannot heal you and you're not getting topped up constantly. Yeah. So I'm I'm really I'm I'm really, you know, surprised and yeah, I'm I'm really surprised and you know you know, really excited to see these games coming through. You know, this is the map that will take it all or you know, lose it all. If you know if uh, what do you call it? Team Unchained Rose need and want to come back and take this series. They need to do it right now and yeah. in this map. Well, you know, looks like we'll take a small little break as we talk more about it. But you know, like I was saying, if Unchained Rose wants to come back and do this reverse sweep, they need to do it right now. Yeah. And on this map, if not, it will be too late. You know, they cannot afford to waste any time or any you know, any any point in this map. You know. Exactly. So, talking about all this. How do you feel coming into this matchup? Well, I'm feeling excited to see what Crispy Wonton is gonna pull out of his out of his magic hat um hat of tricks. You know, we saw a junkrat counter a Farah. Like just let that sink in, okay? A junk rat, the projectile hero yeah, like countered Farah. Yeah, like did anybody counter. on the stream clip it? Like that was amazing. Send it to Fresh Nuts or something. Is he still doing YouTube? Yeah, he is. He's okay, okay. <laughs> He's still alive. But yeah, send it to Fresh Nuts or something because that was insane. <laughs> he, a Junkrat mined himself up, threw, uh, did, uh, uh, threw one grenade at the far and another mine and just blew her up like nothing. Yeah, that was kind of the most interesting version of Castus Curse I've seen. You know? <laughs> so normally, whoever we spectate just seems to seem to keel over and die. But honestly, <laughs> if... if if it's a farmer dying to a Junkrat, I'd, I'd, I'd replay that. I honestly would. Now, speaking of Junkrats, we do get to see Crispy Wants on, on the Junkrat. And, you know, Unchained Rose is going to have to be on their toes, making sure that there's any no spam. Actually, no, apologies. The, yeah, Unchained Rose is going to have to be on their toes, making sure that none of the spam gets in and, you know, gets an unnecessary pick before they can fully push in. I, I suspect that Crispy Wonton is going to have an easy uh, easy time charging the ult, but at the same time, Shadow Slay is going to have an easy time getting to 100% charge. Huh. We're, seeing, we we're seeing a very high DPS composition coming out from Hunter College right now, where yeah. Unchained Rowans are just running the normal Zen Goats right now. And, you know, I, let's see what happens right now. I was expecting more of a May coming in here, since they are, they look so strong on yeah. that champion. But, you know, let's see how oh, this is. Rexa's taking a lot of damage. He's getting pressure his shield is falling low they're just converging on him the bubble is there for him the support oh is there. my god crispy one time he's not getting first blood but he's getting the second one he and breaks the finds to pick somehow on the sparrow getting out by the skin of his team i don't know how we survived that but the supports the supports love him like i, I feel like he should treat his supports to some just a dinner afterwards yeah he, he needs to buy them something you know and um <laughs> not to mention <laughs> We, this guy Crispy is playing so aggressive. He was literally up in Zarya's <laughs> face, exactly. shooting bubbles. Like <laughs> that was amazing. He said your bubble only takes 200 damage before it goes on like a 10 second cooldown. I have bombs in mind for days. So <laughs> he, you know, he was gonna take that gamble. And speaking of speaking of aggressiveness, Regza already has a shatter line, and it looks like he might have a free opportunity to use it here. But Unchained Rose is gonna kind of go back, you know. And they're gonna they're actually gonna catch Azari out. Shadow Slate doesn't make quite make it back and somebody was sleeping on the job. I didn't get to quite see who, but somebody I think was it was sleeping. uh I think it was the Zenyatta. I'm yeah. pretty sure. So Jafrizi has his nano boost, Regza has his shatter, um, you know, Crispy Wanton and Kokomori are also come up. Hunter College is super close to a full arsenal. Unchained Rose, you know, they're not fully grown yet, they're still budding it just a little bit. I'm gonna keep making all of these plant puns until <laughs> until this is over. <laughs> but you know, what Hunter College could do right here, they, they could use the shatter to bait out the transcendence and then later Looks use like the ground. 
and they shot it early, but is it gonna is Rooster gonna find anybody? It's running out a second. Oh it my god! Finds two. That's all you need, really. Opens it wide open, and Kogamori and Regular just gonna get. They're gonna be on the chase. They're gonna be on their heels. The last thing you want to do when there's a rip tower out is keep your get your back against the wall where it's easier to you know find you can find and you know we see crispy just flying through the map entire map soul consumer doing a bit of scout scouting i believe yeah. and you know we do see uh Zavol Zavol oh my, oh my yeah. god that is a high damage volley into the face and body of sexy boss they don't have a widow maker but Honestly, it doesn't necessarily decrease their fortitude that much. The Nano Boost is going to come out onto, onto Regza, and the Shadow is going to come out. It doesn't quite find anybody. Regza and, his, Regza and the team just seem to jump out of the way in the nick of time. The Transcendence is there. The pin is going to not find the wall just in time. Regza is going to get pressure from the bridge. He's either going to find the support in time. It's Hammer versus Mace, and it looks like Mace is going to come out on top. Kokomori, 100% charge. I mean, he's at 78% charge. He has to take out the break, and he does it. And Hunter Cog is going to be able to hold the point. Crispy is falling a bit low, but he managed to find the health back. He's back up top. Sexy Box makes the switch over onto the onto the Tracer. Maybe having a bit more versatility, a bit more aggressiveness. You know, just be, uh, being that nuisance in the background on Chain Rolls. Yeah, and what I'm seeing that's you know really hurting on Chain Rolls at this point is that... Oh, and Koga Mori burning a hole in Seaball right there. You know, they're really not you know, backing out in any time. Like, you know, there would be a lot of times where their main tanks of a vault would be down or, you know, be killed by something and they're just not backing off. They're not regrouping as one and they're just, you know, really losing a lot of time and a lot of... Oh my god! In the aggressive puzzle, they're just gonna funnel them back into the spawn. Hunter College becoming like the plunger and just shoving everything back into the spawn. You know, they're gonna... It's a bad place to be if you're getting punished just for leaving the spawn. Yeah, and uh, all we're seeing right now are blue on the kill feed. We need to see some red coming yeah, in. Rexos is a bit of a is a bit of a sneaky place. He finds Colton Soul Consumer. That's all he really needs to find. He gets the nano boost out. Zebo is gonna have to be on. He's gonna have to be on his soul, just backing up. But he gets the discord orb and he finds the support. Yeah, is he gonna be able to touch point in time? I don't think he is. Nah, nope. That's actually a very strong full hold from Hunter College. Unchained Rose needing an answer here. They really need to, and I would say go back to their bunker because they did seem the most, the strongest when they played that bunker composition on Dorado. So you know why not go with it here? But would they be able to deal with Riggs's aggression? I mean, you know, Hanamura is first point is a really good place to play bunker because you just set up at that little dojo that you have next to the point where you know not necessarily be at the choke, but right away from the choke where what they're entering. They have to take your crossfire. If they don't play this, play that correctly, they will be picked up by your bastion. So you know, a lot could be going, a lot could go on in this map, and you know, I'm excited to see what they bring. But I, I personally say, you know, they should bring out the, you know, team Unchained Rose should bring out their bunker composition. Oh, at least that's what they look strongest with but no looks like they will go with the may composition soul consumer getting on the may again you know they we did see the may from them in Lijang uh, control center but it wasn't as effective as the um, composition that uh, team hunter college run but it was still something nonetheless now you know we're seeing speaking of compositions kogamori onto the symmetra my assumption is that they're going to teleport the point you know good old turret bomb mm -hmm. set up make make it so that you kind of flip the point. You become the defender yourself, you know? You defend the point, and they only need one tick. So if they catch Unchanged Rose uh, off guard, then it, it could be real strong. Yeah, and that composition that Hunter College is running looks like it's a composition that would go from many different directions at once. So, you know, uh, let's see what's going on here. Let's see how they play this out. Regza is going in very aggressively first. And then yeah, he oh, kind of diverts the attention of Unchained Rose because Crispy is able to go in on the Doom, but oh, he's going to get frozen. No. Didn't quite find the kill that he needed, but he almost did. And it might just be enough for Sexy Box to finish his work. He's going to take it on. And he's going to get healed up. He falls a bit low. Icicles are hitting him. Regza just swinging around the point, getting a lot of cleave damage, actually. He, he got stunned. He falls a bit low. Getting a little bit of support, he's gonna go back to what he's doing before. Swinging around, forcing off the mode. Yeah, and Hopefully look at his ultimate the charge. He actually found the boom. Sparrow gets knocked off the map. And speaking of getting forced off the map, Shadow Slayer is on the very edge. He's falling a bit low. He finds a pick onto RBM and Soul Consumer finds the pick onto Crispy. But it's just Sexy Box right now. Pokemon is on the point with the Symmetra. It's sexy, it's a sexy box though. And I don't think you're old enough for it. <laughs> 
And that Unchained was like Unchained Rose gets getting uprooted here. A very short series. Hunter College looking really dominant, you know, con con keeping the momentum, keeping that wrecking ball momentum all since from the last match. And we get to see Rexa do his thing right here. And, you know, just round look at and this. round and round we go. <laughs> here we go. The wall's in his way, but he doesn't seem to let that stop him. Just forcing him off the <laughs> map. He manages, he manages to find his ult, just drops it right there. That's Why all you not? need. You know, and just just end the show with some fireworks. That was a five-minute match. That was that was like that was very fast. If we were keeping if we were keeping like map speed record. That might just be it. And that might be the fastest one Hanamura we have seen so far. And you know, props to both teams for playing. We might get one more game. You know, usually Maybe. they teams like to do four games i am not sure in this case where we're getting or not we'll be figuring that figuring that out in just in a second but you know what a match you know yeah, <laughs> talk about before. being one-sided most of the maps were either you know either full holds or just just gone just straight yeah. done you know the longest map we probably had was Li Jang, if that's because you're forced to play two different points yeah this has, so. been, this has been like so quick that i think the bodies are still there from some <laughs> of the older maps like <laughs> so the, the smoke <laughs> hasn't even settled yet but <laughs> but hunter yeah. college wow. kind of <laughs> just like flexing this storing you know just overlord type Exactly, and we've seen Unchained Rose just leave the lobby really quickly. You no, know, that was a, that you was know, bad. and you know, lo lose losses are always not bad. You know, as a team, you do want to have some losses so you could it's go an back. It's opportunity to learn. Yeah, exactly. It's an opportunity to learn. You do VOD reviews. You see what went well, what didn't, and you know, you really sit down and see what you could come up with. And so, in the next game, you could utilize that. So, you know, yeah, you know, as much as wins look great, you know, losses are also an opportunity to really make yourself yeah. better. And, you know, it it might seem a bit unethical, but there's nothing wrong with learning from your opponent. You, exactly. can, you can take what they did and improve on that. Maybe exactly. you can do it better. Maybe you can find a unique spin on it that they didn't even expect. And honestly, I find that losses motivate me, you know, to do better next time. Yeah. You're really strong. Yeah, if you always win, then there's really not much you could, you know, go after. You're just kind of used to it. You exactly. Know? And you might not know what worked, what you could be better, or even your own potential that you could reach. So, you know, loses are good, but, you know, we do have a winner. Hunter College, you know, Hunter X Hunter, as they call themselves, <laughs> you know, at and what a great win, you know, what a way yeah. to finish the series. Looks like and just to college, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of like nip the bud, you know, and just <laughs> get the rose head. They're hunting down <laughs> teams, that's what they're known for. But, yeah. you know, um, what a series. But, you know, we will be taking the stream shortly. And, you know, me here as Pinka and my partner Romy, you know, be sure right. to follow us on Twitter. You know, we should you should be able to find us with these tags. But, you know, it was really, it was really, you know, an honor to cast this and you know we it was really fun to cast even though it was one-sided we seen some really spectacular stuff coming yeah. out for both teams so you know i, I was I, I had a lot of fun so I mean, what do you say i say it was real fun too seeing the different compositions we saw mm -hmm. seeing character uh, seeing people pop off that we don't normally get to see we didn't see we didn't see rbm pop off as much as we did um as much as he did against Unchained Rose exactly. when he was playing against um, Huguenots. Yeah, but which was really nice. But, you know, we'll call it a night, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm have Romy. a good night. This is Pink Guy. This is Pink Guy. We'll see you next time. We are live from Encore. Don't Be sure to check out our our, um, our upcoming streams. Encore Esports is on 538 Main Street, second floor, New Rochelle, New York. We are open from 3 p.m. to 2 a.m. every day. $10 full day pass. You can follow us on Twitter, Encore Esports at e U.S., Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitch, YouTube, everything. We have Apex, Fortnite, CSGO, you name it, we have it. We, we have Roblox, we have tournaments on a regular, Mortal Kombat, Fighter Z, even Pokemon Go still, Overwatch, as you just saw, and many more to come. Thank you.